Hey. It's so good out here. It's nice to be outside, isn't it? Mm. It's an apple. Let's take everyone. The goats are gonna want one too. Uh, the goats eat to get half. Okay. Here. <laughs> no more. <laughs> yeah, wait your turn. Come on, go. But they won't have the whole baby clothes. Mm -hmm. All right, come dump the grain up in here. Good guy. Dump it in. Good job. Is that yummy? Milk. Milk. We're putting new batteries in both of our chargers so that we're ready to go container animals and just have both of them up and running so we can move our animals like we really want to be doing. Come on, bud, let's go eat lunch. Let's go. I have two fence chargers here. And I have two batteries. I have the Parmac battery and there's the battery from Premier One. There you go, easier done than said. Let's compare these two chargers for a minute. What's the difference between them? This is a 12 volt and this is a 12 volt. But this is, I think this is a two joule and this is a half of a joule. So for this half joule charger, you only need this, what is that, a 16 inch ground rod and for this charger, I'm using three 30 inch ground rods. This charger is much smaller, more portable, and easier to set up. It has, it's a lot lighter. It has a handle on top. And you only have to put one little ground rod in the ground. This one is heavier, no handle, and has all these ground rods. So I'm gonna use the bigger charger. I'm gonna set it up here as kind of this permanent charger that'll charge the perimeter fence. And then this one, I'm gonna use for moving animals, any fence that we're gonna move or carry frequently because it's so fast to set up. I'm gonna leave both those chargers in the sun off to let the batteries charge all the way up. I got a package in the mail. I'm really excited about it. It's from Stark Brothers Nursery down in, where? Louisiana. I will put a link to Stark Brothers in the description of this video. 
This is not a sponsored video. I wouldn't mind if it were. I've got some apple trees in the mail. The important thing right when you get trees in the mail is to check and make sure their roots are still damp. They put this wet paper in here to keep them damp. Also got some strawberry plants, which won't go in today. You're gonna take those and stick them straight in a bucket of water. I've got three varieties here. Two dwarfs, which are Lodi and Braystar, which is like a Starks Brother exclusive variety. Those are both really small dwarf trees. They're very early ripening apples. They're gonna go right next to the house. The smokehouse is a semi-dwarf. That means it's kind of a medium-sized tree. That'll go way up at the top. It's a late ripening apple, a good storage apple. It's an apple I've wanted to grow for a long, long time. This spot has been picked out for apple tree for over a year. And just a couple months ago, I piled this compost here. I put some soil amendments, some mineral amendments on here. This is manure compost mix. I'm gonna pull all that back. It's alive. Subterranean beings. I think this is my new favorite way to plant a tree. Piling compost and manure on top months ahead, and then you're ready to dig your hole when the, you get the trees in the mail. That was the easiest hole I've ever dug. I'm pretty happy with how this soil is conditioned and prepared for this apple tree. Next, we're gonna drive a six foot metal T-post down this hole because these are full dwarf trees. It's ideal to give them some permanent support to protect them from the wind as they get bigger. Next, I'm gonna take this Lodi tree. We wanna preserve every single one of these roots so you don't want to break them as they go in. Set it down into your hole to the height that you want it. Make sure the roots are all spread out in every direction. Just letting it filter down through those roots, not smashing your roots down. Keep your high roots lifted up. This is the graft union right here, and you want that to be a couple inches above the soil level. Now I'm gonna pack this soil in more. Compost back around the tree keeping it away from the trunk. And we're done with tree number one. planted and next we're just gonna water them down here really good you'll want to baby the trees you plant for the first summer and make sure that the ground never gets dry I don't have time to plant the last tree you don't want to leave your trees roots soaking for more than 24 hours so what I'm gonna do is lay it back in this plastic bag I'm gonna pack all these damp newspapers around the roots and then wrap it up really really nice and tight and then we'll set it down here underneath the house. So it'll stay cool, but not freezing, and protected from anything that might get into it. All right. So I'd like to issue a little challenge to you before the video ends, and challenge you to plant some apple trees this year. You've still got time to order them. Most people have space to plant a few apple trees. Let's look in more detail at how much space you actually need. Let's talk about dwarf fruit trees. Dwarf fruit trees generally have a spread of under 10 feet. Let's suppose that we're gonna plant four trees.
This is going to take up a space of about 20 feet by 20 feet in your yard. If you were to buy these trees from somewhere like Stark Brothers, we're talking about $25 a tree times four, about a hundred dollars, and that will give you free shipping if you go over a hundred dollars. So we're talking about a hundred dollars, an afternoon planting trees and having a miniature orchard in your yard. If you want to plant semi-dwarf trees, they have a spread of about 15 feet. So your end orchard would be about 30 by 30 feet, and again, from Starks Brothers, it would run about $100 to plant a little mini orchard like this. An option, if you have even less space, is to plant actually three trees in one hole, and then you'll end up pruning them, so they're mostly leaning out. You might need to stake them in the middle. You could actually have three trees within about a seven and a half foot radius from the center of where you plant them. Well, this has been another great day on the homestead. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that. And we'll be back soon with more great videos. Ooh.